Well, to God be the glory. Good morning, Emmanuel United Church of Christ. So glad that you are here with us today in person and online. Uh, if you are joining us online, I hope you'll sign in on the chat or in the comments and let us know that you are here because your presence matters to us. And if there is something that we need to know, uh, let us know in there and we will find out about it. For those of you who are present here in the sanctuary, I invite you to look for a blue folder that is our friendship pad, and you can sign in there and pass it down uh, and let us know uh, if there's anything we need to know for you as well. A couple of announcements in the life of our church before uh, we begin. You may have noticed that there are cans starting to pile up and boxes. Uh, we are collecting for Dare to Care for this Thanksgiving season. You got one more week to bring in your things here and uh, there are going to be small children hounding you for them for at least one more week. Um, and so we encourage you to give and give generously and help them, uh, help them to see what their church can do. Uh, and that is sponsored by uh, Miss Jean's Sunday School class. For our adult education, we have another opportunity today. Um, after church today, it's a bring your own lunch, but we do have bagels if you need them. Uh, UCC history uh, from the Reformation to today and beyond. Um, so we're going to uh, meet in the conference room, which is the meeting room back in that direction. If you want to join us online, please uh, let us know. Uh, you can put a note in the chat or contact Samantha. We will get you a link and you can join online for that. Uh, 
Also, this is not in your bulletin, um, sorry about that, but the CIA, the Christians in Action group is meeting at 1 p.m. this Thursday for a matinee of Singing in the Rain. Uh, and all are invited to that. And so uh, just let, who are we letting know? The Gordons or the Sherbys know uh, if you are planning to come to that because there will be snacks. Um, and uh, what else do we have here? The, the Community Problems Assembly of Clout met last week. Uh, and they decided on a focus issue of children and youth in the Louisville area. So they're going to be narrowing that down to something attainable, and then they are going to uh, start pushing for it among our um, governing bodies. And so that is that's Clout's plan. And finally, we are still collecting for uh, our stewardship campaign. So if you have yet to make a best guess as to what you're able to give to this congregation to help us be sustainable over the next year, you can contact Rich Ackerman, who is working hard on the budget. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> He also has a special email address, iuccTreasurer at gmail.com. Next week is our big congregational meeting. This is the almost no excuses, everybody attend meeting uh, where we decide on things like next year's budget and any other important matters of the church. So look, watch your email closely this week. You'll be getting copies of all of that stuff, including the agenda. Uh, we will mail it to those folks who don't do email. Um, and if you would prefer to just have a paper copy, uh, just let somebody on church staff know and we will make that happen. Okay. I think that is the business of the church. Let us get to the business of worshiping God. Would you join me in our opening prayer? Our loving and caring God, we need this time together to be united with our siblings in faith. We need this time of worship to be comforted and strengthened in your presence. We hear wars and rumors of wars. We read of persecution and oppression. Remind us again of your vision that all might live in a world of peace and justice and love. And imprint this vision on our hearts O oh God, that we might live into this beloved community. Amen. Let's rise in body and spirit and sing as a beloved community. <clears throat>
say Shinner Church, by the way. I got three people jumping back here to come into worship. They said, can I come in? Can I come in? Can I come in? Can I come in? So anybody else who feels like, can I come in? Can I come in? Can I come in? Can I come in? Worship? Come on up front. I like that. I'm glad you do. So actually, we're going to get you right back up so you don't have to check us down. So do you see these things? All these nice little blankets, right? They all were made by some of these lovely people. And they're going to go to some people who are very, very sick. But first, we got to put a little more love into them, okay? So the people that made it, when they were praying, when they were doing their knots on the corners, they were thinking about these people. They were putting all kinds of love and all kinds of healing power into them. So we're going to do the same thing. And we're going to put a lot of comfort in here and make sure that people feel loved and cozy and warm when they get these. So pick a couple of them up because you're gonna hug them. So pick your pick, pick your favorite one. We have to get all of them. So what kind of one? So if you're a belly one. I was a bit distracted. Did you mention that we made these at Mission Fest? Yeah, sorry, made them at Mission Fest. Made them at Mission Fest. Some people made them this week. Pick a couple, pick a couple, pick a couple. We got it, we gotta get them all. We gotta bless them all. Yeah, we gotta bless them all. So take more that you want to. Anybody else wanna come bless them? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put this one this way and this one right here. You're gonna hold that one. Ooh, notice, <laughs> notice. So warm. He's super cozy right now. We're super cozy. Okay, we got them all. Okay, you gotta put a lot of love into him. Can we hug him? We gotta hug him. We got people. There's a lot of people who are sick. got lots of love in them. They gotta know. They gotta feel it. We got them all. Look at Everett. Be, be Everett. Be Eve. Get all of them. <laughs> all of them. And then we're all gonna bless him. Okay. But Rachel's gonna do it. Focus all right. On Focus on the love. Okay. Now, what I'm going to invite you all to do is also add your blessings. And so you're going to think wonderful, loving, healing, uh, comforting thoughts and send them toward these blankets. And you guys who are in and under the blankets are going to also hug them as hard as you can as we say this prayer. God, help the people who will receive these blankets that were so lovingly made feel this hug. Feel your divine hug. Feel that they are not alone and know that they are cared for and prayed for and loved. Please, God, send this with all of our love. Amen. Yeah. We want to say thank you to all the people who helped make these blankets. Uh, these are labors of love. Um, and, and it really shows, it really matters. I have visited people who were in hospice care who have these blankets and they say that it brings them comfort to know that someone made it for them. So um, thank you for all of that. And thank you for your hugs and your blessings. I figure you all give the most, you give the best hugs. So that's why you could give these better, leaves, better than anybody else. So thank you. Okay, we'll open them up and we're gonna get your bags too. I know it's pretty easy today. I didn't have a whole lot to do you do. It's all good. <laughs> oh, you just wanna cuddle with the blankets. I hear that, these are soft. They're super nice. They're gonna need cuddle through church. We got more. Oh, oh nope. Here, I'm you need help here too. Are you buried in blankets? That is a way to take on some blessing right there. Ooh. These are super warm. You will see blessing of the blankets later in your bulletin. We're gonna skip that because we just did it. Yep. Ooh, I'm sorry about this. Whoop. Is it more? Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, if you are able, will you please stand? I know you're looking up here thinking, gosh, she was just literature a month ago. What is she doing up here? <laughs> well, it was supposed to be Marianne Sherby, and she is sick this morning. So hopefully, if she is watching Marianne, I hope you get well soon, or you won't be able to go to Singing in the Rain on Thursday. All right, we are going to say together the statement of faith, which can be found either in the back of your hymnal, or Noah's going to put it up on the screen for us. We believe in God, the eternal spirit, who is made known to us in Jesus, our brother, and to whose deeds we testify. God calls the worlds into being, creates humankind in the divine image, and sets before us the ways of life and death. 
God seeks in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. God judges all humanity in all nations by that will of righteousness declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, God has come to us and shared our common life, conquering sin and death and reconciling the whole creation to its creator. God bestows upon us the Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. God calls us into the church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be servants in the service of the whole human family, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. God promises to all who trust in the gospel, forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, presence of the Holy Spirit in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in that kingdom which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto God. Amen. seated. Well, as you know, Friday of this week, our nation celebrated Veterans Day, and you may remember that the history of this day is Armistice Day, the day that we, in great hope, laid down arms on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month to end the war, to end all wars, World War I. It did not, of course, end all wars, and we read about battles in headlines still today. And so it's a complicated day because we do not wish to honor the idea of war, but we do wish to honor our veterans who have suffered mightily for the sake of our nation and for the noble ideas for which it stands. And so I believe that our most faithful response is to work and pray for the veterans who are alive today to receive all the care that they need to live good and healthy lives and to work toward a world that has no need of war because everyone has what they need. That is, of course, a goal too lofty for mere mortals and will take divine help. And it's the kind of vision that is brought to us by prophets who proclaim that God is yet at work making all things new. So today we want to take a moment to honor the sacrifice and the suffering and the service of those who've given their lives or portions of their lives in service to our country. If you are present and part of one of these groups, we invite you to stand, raise a hand, uh, in whatever way that might uh, feel meaningful to you. And so we honor the veterans of the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Army, the U.S. Coast Guard, the U.S. Marine Corps, the U.S. Navy, the U.S. Space Force, the U.S. Public Health Service Commissioned Corps, and I know we have one at home who is standing for that, the National Guard and Reserves, NOAA Commission Corps, U.S. Peace Corps and AmeriCorps. We thank you all and pray for you. And we thank and pray for all those impacted by war who are not considered veterans, but who still bear the consequences of war. 
families and caregivers, civilian contractors, veteran service providers, and civilian casualties. Let us pray for our veterans. Holy God, our strength and our fortress, today we give thanks for the bravery and commitment and sacrifice of all who serve in our country's armed forces. Help us remember, honor, and support those who helped serve and continue to serve, and show us the ways that we can be the church for those returning from deployment and for the families who have loved ones in service. God of healing, we pray for those who have returned to civilian life, who are learning to live with what they have been through. We pray that you will move the will of our government to continue to support veterans well after discharge, to meet their physical, emotional, spiritual, and social needs. And God of peace and justice, usher in a just peace. Don't allow us to take comfort in quiet and non-confrontation. Unsettle us if we choose order over equity, harmony over solidarity, convenience over justice. God of reconciliation, show us a world created in your image. Fortify us for the ongoing work of creating peace and help us work with you for a new heaven and a new earth. In the name of the Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to invite Lucas forward with a special tribute. If you are able, please stand up for the national anthem. Uh, this song is to all the veterans uh, who served in the military, especially my grandpa, David Riley, who served in the Air Force. for your service to all veterans. Lucas, thank you very much. You now can join Soul Shakers. They have to call explain. As a parent of musicians who play for you all, it's always more fun watching the parents as their child is playing than watching the child. So I was keeping an eye on you all. Uh, it's now time for the morning scripture, and if you'd like to join in along, it's coming today from Isaiah chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, 
and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create, for behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in the sounds of weeping and the crying of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. The young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old will be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bear children for calamity. They shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together. The lion shall eat straw like the fox and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in my holy mountain, says the Lord. I don't know about you all, but when I read this, I did not understand it. So first I thought I was reading the wrong verse for today. I looked it up. Nope, sure enough, that is it. So the part I still don't get, so Rachel, I'm looking forward to your sermon today, is how you're going to tie this all in together, is how I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered. Do my best. Very good. <laughs> As I rewrite my sermon, we have an anthem <laughs> for, uh, from our choir.
Thank you to the choir. If any of you would like the seat up here that gives you chills, I will help you have, uh, have a moment to sit up here <laughs> because it is just, it's beautiful. And, and if my sermon is, is useless to answer your questions, I believe that the anthem was sermon enough. So uh, hopefully that will help. <laughs> Friends, would you pray with me? Help us see, oh God, illumine our hearts that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of us may be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, today's sermon was inspired by Lucas and his dedication of the Star Spangled Banner um, to his grandfather uh, and to the love that is there and also the ways in which our styles of music continue to challenge and help us think in new ways. This was a, a version inspired by the Jimi Hendrix version of the Star Spangled Banner. And it helps us ask the questions, is what we hoped for and fought for still there? It has been such a long night. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light that there is yet hope? To be honest, I've never been a true fan of the Star Spangled Banner. I always thought it was a little too focused on war, maybe a little too American exceptionalist, would have maybe gotten a little more behind America the Beautiful, but alas, I was not present in Congress in 1931 to make my case. But rereading the lyrics, as I was uh, thinking about this Sunday, I found a new power and a new meaning in them, in recognizing that this is a song about the anguish that comes after a long night, the hope of persevering even when all seems lost and when so much trauma has happened. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at twilight's last gleaming. It is written after a long and dangerous and terrifying night, when surely some have died, how many have we been overtaken, dare we still to hope. When Jimi Hendrix played his version at Woodstock in 1969. It was also after a long and sleepless night, although I don't think it was a war. And he was not expected to play that morning, but people had had to be moved around in their set lists and uh, some of the evening acts got moved to the morning and Jimmy woke everyone up with this version of the Star Spangled Banner using the power of the electric guitar to really make that impact of the war and the painful sounds of the war of the bombs and what that might really have been like. And it was a reality for so many who had come back from Vietnam or had loved ones there. His playing, and he played it at many more venues, afterward was both a challenge to the idea of blind patriotism, but an ego driven war, but it was also a love song to the values that we still proclaim in those dark nights. Why am I talking about our national anthem? <laughs> because I think it dovetails well with this passage from Isaiah. Isaiah is a prophet speaking to a people who have been through a long night. And in fact, this is, this is the school of Isaiah, which means we don't actually know who wrote this part. We know Isaiah wrote the first 39 chapters, 
But then I think the, the scholars think that the other chapters were written in the name of Isaiah, in the school of Isaiah, with the spirit of Isaiah. And that first 39 chapters were composed during the Babylonian exile. And they were composed both as a way of saying, y'all done messed up. And here is the result. God is allowing conquerors to come and take over and take your leaders into exile. And you're gonna, you're gonna suffer the consequences of not keeping the covenant with God, which was primarily worshiping God above all others and loving the orphans and the widows and the people in need. Second Isaiah, the part that comes after the y'all done messed up part, is a much more compassionate thing. It, it, it honors that the people are suffering and maybe it's deserved, but it still hurts. And it promises that they will not be forgotten, that God is faithful even when we are not, that we are still God's beloved people. This is the part where you hear that line, and he will lift you up on eagle's wings, and bear you on the breath of dawn, and make you to shine like the sun. This comes from that comfort song. And then we get to third Isaiah which is where our passage today, confusing as it is, comes. It is written to the people who have returned from exile and the people who never left, as they are trying to figure out a new path together. There are people who had been part of the elite that had gone and lived in Babylon and done not too badly, actually, in exile. And these are probably their grandchildren or great-grandchildren who are returning to the land that they have heard about in stories their whole lives. And they are returning to take back that land. But there are all these other people that never left. And so you might imagine there's some conflict there. And there is some reacquainting to have to do with one another. And so in comes this prophecy from the school of Isaiah. And it is a reminder of God's vision for the world, which is not like the former things. It is a reminder that there is yet a better way to live together in peace. And it says that we do not remember the former things. And I think, you know, I don't know how realistic that is. When you've been through pretty severe trauma, you're going to remember it. But the idea that those can be fully healed and that a new creation is possible is the powerful message that Isaiah brings. It, he is saying what peace looks like, what peaceful cohabitation looks like. He's offering a place in which the powerful coexist peacefully with the less powerful. The wolf and the lamb dwell together. The lion becomes a happy vegetarian. The snake eats dust. I like this vision. In this place, everyone has enough to live and to eat, even the snake, even if it is dust, still got his meal. And they all work together to make it happen. This does not indicate that it is all just rained down from heaven like manna, but in fact, they all work the land together. They have not a free lunch, but a fair lunch. It speaks of a place in which every child born lives for a hundred years with a healthy and pain-free body. Can I get an amen? We would love such a place. And then they die a peaceful death. And the next children who are born do not suffer either. It's this vision of health and wholeness. And it is what God holds up, that they won't labor in vain or bear children to a world of horrors, because they will be people blessed 
by the Lord, along with their descendants, who answers when they call, while they're still speaking, God hears. These particular verses that Pam read were chosen, uh, picked out of this part of Isaiah from, by, by the folks who created the lectionary, um, which is a long story. Right before it, though, that we don't read, unless you want to go back in your pew Bible and look, are 16 verses about how the exile and the wars and the conquering were because they had messed up. And yet God loves the people so much that God will not let them die out and instead will use this remnant to create a new garment, a peaceful one, full of equality and love for one another. These two sections together feel to me like Hendrix's version of the national anthem. It's both a challenge to those who had let the drive for power and selfishness overtake their faith and compassion for those in need, as well as a love song to the values that we still proclaim, that we still seek, that we still strive for, of love and equality and peace. When we were choosing this passage as a staff this week, we had no idea how the election would turn out, but we did suspect that people would have some feelings. And so, as Samantha so wisely said, you know, it doesn't matter how it turns out, because either way, this is our message. Either way, this is the song that we sing in defeat and in victory. It is a song of equality and peace. It is a song of the hope for the downtrodden, of humility for those in power, a song of prayers answered for food and housing and a chance to live a long and healthy life. It is a song that is a reminder that God is still speaking, that God is still creating anew, a new heaven, a new earth, a new hope. Beyond the aftermath of this week's little tiny battle in the midterm elections, we are also in a much wider time of difficulty, a time when the church that we know it, we knew it, appears to be leaving us or being in the process of being destroyed and, and some for good reason. And yet we still experience God most fully when we gather together and sing and eat and pray. That potluck we had a few weeks ago now is still giving me life. We still sing this song, even though we are in a time when suffering in bodies ha that have not remained spry or healthy until we are 100 years old, when we ache and cry with pain and grief. It is a time when widows and orphans still can get forgotten or easily abused. It is a time when literal wars and rumors of wars seem unending and our headlines are full of battles as bad as those our parents and grandparents fought, as bad as some of us fought. This is the time to sing our foolish refrain, a song sung out of exhaustion and hope. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what we once proclaimed with ease before the twilight's last gleaming? The faith of our forebears brought them through their hard times. It's now our song to sing, making mercy and peace rhyme. Though many churches have closed and there is Sabbath no more, we must choose with our hearts which God will adore. Oh say, can we still see God's vision from above, a land of just peace and a home for God's love. I pray that we can still see it, still work for it, still be inspired by it, even when we only have the glimmer of dawn.
is now time for our offering. And although the plates do not come around, doesn't mean you still cannot give. There are many ways. There's always one in the narthex that you can drop in your offering coming or going from the sanctuary. For you, those who want to do, you can mail it. You can get on our website, make a contribution or have an automatic deduction come out each week. So with that, if you'll pray. Oh God, we long to make a difference in our world. We offer you what we have, our visions and our dreams, our witness to your savings acts of love and justice, our resources to help bring the new heaven and the new earth into our midst. Amen. Let us pray. We sing, O oh God, sometimes with gusto, sometimes half-heartedly, sometimes with the last fiber of our being. We sing of your love, of your compassion, of your ultimate victory over the powers that harm and oppress. Forgive us when we falter or stop singing at all. And sing with us. God, remind us of the tune. Give us breath to fill our lungs and join our voices together so that we can sustain the notes together. We ask especially your holy breath on those in our hearts who most need it, including Lydia, and Craig, Ramona, McKenna, Jennifer, teachers and students who are just trying to stay well, and all those who suffer from so many illnesses going around. Our beloved who are at home or in nursing and senior facilities, including Jane, Mary Lou, Mary Ellen, Doris, May, and Gail, and people everywhere affected by violence, disasters, oppression, and war. God, we are thankful for the news that baby Mac, who we've been praying for, is healthy and happy and home. And that is the vision, God, that we pray for now and always. We lift to you those in our hearts whose needs are too tender yet for public speech, but who you know. We raise them to you. And we pray as Jesus taught us, reaching out to you as our maker, our mother, and our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever. Oh, say, can we still see God's vision from above, a land of just peace and a home for God's love? If you can see it, friends, live it. Live as though it is already here and do so knowing that you are surrounded by God, the creator, Christ, the redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, the sustainer, who goes with you and surrounds you now and always. Go in peace. Amen.